The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "Hello there, and welcome to Four Center presents Data Bank Dive." I'm Ken Napsok. And I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and this is our show where we talk about things that are weird, wild, wondrous in Star Wars. Sometimes it's all three of those W's. Sometimes a fourth W sneaks in. But we love doing this show because it gives us a chance to just really obsess over a very specific thing in Star Wars. If you enjoy it, uh, we did do a season of this on The Companion, a great sci-fi discussion app that you can check out. We had 10 episodes there, and we loved it, so we kept doing it. And here we are today, Ken. Here we are today. This is the 18th of our public facing episodes. I, I never assume people listen in order, but want to thank everyone who had a lot of fun with our, our 17th episode, which was the shore troopers, the coastal defender troopers. A lot of people <laughs> coming in with love for not only that episode, but the shore troopers. Uh, a lot of people tagging our jokes of what they're wearing. Uh, <laughs> shout out to God, one of uh, uh, one of our uh, YouTube commenters uh, made great reference to them being R E. Eye pants that they're wearing, some good outdoor <laughs> pants. <laughs> they I totally forgot, are. I forgot to write down who that was. If it was you, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, a lot of that. Um, so that was kind of the weird side of the Imperial Troopers last week. This week, Joseph, I, this is wild. This is weird. But I think it's going to be a little more wondrous than previous conversations, maybe. But I think mm-hmm. the three W's do count. We are going to a planet. We're going to a location, one that we're all familiar with but i think when you stop and think about it it's got all these qualities that uh beg to be discussed a little bit more with more depth today's topic is dagobah Ooh, here yes here is what the starwars.com databank has to say about dagobah Home to Yoda during his final years, Dagobah was a swamp-covered planet strong with the Force, a forgotten world where the wizened Jedi Master could escape the notice of Imperial forces. Characterized by its bog-like conditions and fetid wetlands, the murky and humid quagmire was undeveloped with no (laughs) signs of technology. Man, though it lacked civilization, the planet was teeming with life from its dense, jungle undergrowth to its diverse animal population home to a number of fairly common reptilian and amphibious creatures dagobah also boasted an indigenous population of much more massive and mysterious life forms surrounded by creatures generating the living for living force yoda learned to connect with the deeper cosmic force and waited for one who might bring the return of the jedi order joseph that is big Heavy, a quagmire of words, one would say. <laughs> yeah, no, we love doing this because we get to read the different database entries, which like some of them are, you know, just uh, very blunt and straightforward and others are poems. This, this, somebody went to town, right? <laughs> Fetid wetlands, the murky and humid quagmire. It yeah. takes you through, Dagobah, it takes you through like, doesn't sound like much, does it? Kind of garbage, right? But wait. Yes. So many beautiful creatures. The force is strong. This one takes you on a journey. Yeah, both wizened and wizened Jedi Masters, depending on <laughs> how you want to say it. Uh, yeah, you're right. The, the Star Wars.com databank can almost pull a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy entry. Like, it could have been Dagobah, mostly swamp, mostly harmless. Like, it could have just been that. <laughs> But this is a story. It's pretty powerful there. But we're not done. We're going to go to <laughs> Wikipedia here and get a little bit more. There's a lot on Wikipedia without a doubt. So I pulled some things that just... Um, Jumped out to me here. Uh, we got a lot here. It shared a mysterious time-related quality with such locales as Mortis and Akto. The continental and oceanic thr- crusts of Dagobah were only vaguely defined, and there was little in the way of volcanic activity or earthquakes. Dagobah was home to many creatures, such as bog wings, dragon snakes, butcher bugs, sleens, vine snakes, and swamp slugs. Sounds like a minor league baseball <laughs> division in the <laughs> south or something. There are examples of flora included the uh, Ladia plant, the yog yoghurt plant. I almost said yogurt plant. <laughs> gnarled tree and the yarum seed. I've heard the gnarled tree before. The plant was de- uh, planet was devoid of any advanced or indigenous civilization of sentience. Though I'd argue, you know, the forest creatures, the wills, pretty advanced in their own kind of way. Dagobah had two seasons: a dry season and a wet season. During the peak of the long dry season, over half an orbit after the rains end, the uplands became too hot for most life forms to survive. 
necessitating any that live there to migrate to the lower lands. That is, I didn't tag where it comes from, but I do think we, I learned that, or at least that general concept, I believe, from the certain point of view story, the one with Yoda, which we're going to mention here again, I'm sure. Joseph, yeah. that's a lot. I've dumped a lot onto the Dagobah <laughs> table. Bog wings and butcher bugs. Oh my, where do you go with all this? Oh, I just, I love getting the data bank entry that does kind of encapsulate some of the big ideas of what Dagobah is, and then just getting into the real technical details on Wikipedia, like it is mm. Space Farmer's Almanac, right? Yeah. It's got a dry season and a wet season. <laughs> <laughs> I love this sort of specificity, almost to the point of getting like, this is still space fantasy, right? Uh, this shouldn't, <laughs> sh shouldn't be boring, right? Right? Like, almost to that point. I, and I love yeah. that tension in Star Wars, where it's, we always want to know more. We always want to get details. And sometimes like, whoa, 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 eh, that's enough. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in contrast, man, the list of, of animals, mm -hmm. the bog wings is one I've always been happy to remember. Uh, the, the dragon snake is uh, great and mm -hmm. cool. Uh, but the collection of names, right? Like, yeah. the, the, this is one of those uh, collections of names that reminds you it's space fantasy and particularly leaning, leaning into like, yeah, we'll just nor use normal Earth names and throw a different word in yeah. front of them. You know, yeah. fine snakes, uh, swamp slugs, thunder pigs. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> lava Gnar moles. Sure, gnarl trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I absolutely love that. I, I'm, I'm so tempted. I want to stay on on topic here, but the mm. yog hurt plant is that right? just yogurt? Is that just the yogurt plant? Is 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 Yoda just basically like doing yoga and, and eating <laughs> some uh, lemon flavored yogurt? Uh, gosh, I do love lemon flavored yogurt. A weird thing about me. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go back. I forgot to bring it up. I, I I'm curious because yeah, I'm familiar with some of these names. Yeah, gnarled trees I've heard before. The dragon snake, of course, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, almost do it. I'm clicking on it here. Um. It's yeah. Oh, there we go. Nothing, nothing else. It's a, uh, it's a tree, a plant that can be found on Dagobah. <laughs> That's the entry. All right. So it's a yogurt plant. So like, yes, yeah. uh, we obviously we know root leaf stew Yoda's making there. I don't think yes. he had those ingredients shipped in from space Amazon. So root leaf. Yeah. Great. Uh, La Hidia yeah. plant. Who knows? <laughs> and then yogurt. Yogurt. <laughs> yogurt. Great. Yogurt. Uh, a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. And, and it's all, yeah, it's funny. The details are sometimes so just, uh, yeah, uh, normal. Um, but I love that the, the two seasons things it means, as we learn, Yoda has two homes. He's a two home kind of cat. You know, <laughs> he's got a summer and a winter home. And I, I think he deserves that. Let's a get into a home and a wet home. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> shutting down the, shutting down the wet home for the winter. Um, Get into it here. I, I we always start with describing it, and this is maybe where I put in putting together this episode. I was like, I, I struggle a little bit of how to even ask this, but I'm just to dive in, Joseph. Here, how would we describe Dagobah the planet, both as a location in the galaxy and a setting for some of Star Wars' most powerful Force-related moments? We got some <laughs> real detailed stuff there. So, if you want to discuss it with the swamp slugs and bog wings, go for it. But when I say Dagobah, what do you think of? I think if I was trying to come up with like a, a catchphrase to sell tourists on, on going to Dagobah, I, I think I would describe it as a one evil tree and millions of normal ones just to really get their curiosity up. Um, mm -hmm. No, I think actually the databank does a good job of kind of capturing what, what, mm -hmm. what I would try to describe about, about Dagobah is it's uh, it's the, the worst of times, the best of times, right? It's a slimy <laughs> mud hole, but also, a fascinating, mysterious dream. You know, I think yeah. it, it really, it, it's Luke's journey of, of looking at everything on the surface, looking at the planet mm -hmm. on the surface, looking at Yoda mm -hmm. on the surface, looking at the, the conflict between the good and evil on the surface, and then learning in Empire Strikes Back how much more complex and layered everything is. So that mm -hmm. makes to me Dagobah partially be like, how, I do, how would I just try, try to describe Dagobah is uh, it is more powerful and valuable than it first appears. That's a, that is a spot on summary. I really feel that description, truly what goes on. You're talking about Luke's journey overall, but the moment he crash lands there, the, the lessons from Yoda, everything about it. And yeah, to, to say, you know, where your, your journey to be uh, becoming this great warrior in Luke's mind, where it truly begins is here. 
I love mm-hmm. everything about that. I love everything about that. And, and it is, it's a little, it's, it's totally normal, totally kind of uh, not where I'd want to move to. We'll talk about that, but also it's, it's a little scary. All these creatures, the sounds, the cave, the cave, there's so much there going on. <laughs> and, and I love uh, that it's uh it is kind of in a weird way, a forgotten planet. Mm-hmm. Love that. But now you're talking about it from Luke's point of view. Uh, whether you saw New Hope first or maybe Canada Prequels first, we always celebrate generational entry points into Star Wars. At some point, we all saw Dagobah for the first time. For jo- Joseph and I, it is, it's a childhood thing, mm-hmm. early 80s. And I wanted to ask that question. What did we make of Dagobah as children? What did young little Joseph sitting down with his action <laughs> figures to watch Empire Strikes Back go into the theater? Think of this murky planet. It was so fascinating to me. Like, I think I, I got what Luke was talking about. It's because it was, you know, scary and gross. And like, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't spend uh, a lot of time outside in, in nature as a kid, just a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. My dad always talked about taking us camping and, and we never really went. And, but we go to like the, the woods. Uh, I lived in Portland, Oregon when Empire Strikes Back came out. It was very young, but we'd go up to, you know, the big, big trees and, and a little bit of nature, but like, I remember seeing like the mud on the bottom of Luke's pants and I was like, gross. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it kind of worked on me because as a kid, I was like, ah, I, do I want to be there or not? And like, it looks kind of icky and scary and gross and there's snakes everywhere and snakes scare me. But the dreamlike quality of it, mm-hmm. the, the, like it's magical and mysterious. That part of it, I was fascinated by. And I, I thinking back on those, some of the ways I like played, I had my Yoda action figure, my much coveted Yoda action figure that older kids tried to to talk me into trading away because it was hard to find. Um, I would try to make Dagobah. I would use the hose in our yard and I would (laughs) pour water into like this corner of the yard and try to make it a slimy mud hole because I wanted, uh, I didn't have at the time the Dagobah playset and I wanted Mm -hmm. to play Dagobah. Uh, so I, I made it. I made Dagobah. But then I couldn't bring myself to set Yoda in it because I didn't want my action figure to get dirty. So clearly I had a lot of Dagobah anxiety. <laughs> Man, I really feel that. <laughs> I'm, I, I took a big swig of my drink when you, you said that. I just, I, I'm right there with you too. Not with the Dagobah, but going in the yard and recreating settings and stuff from many movies and shows. Uh, it's such a thing. But yeah, I, 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 I love... Uh, what you're saying about, uh, you know, interacting with the planet. And I, I too, I, we, my dad was a camper and my mom was not. And I picked, I, I ended up studying more with her at the end of, I love nature, but I need to go back to my hotel room at the end of the night. So Dagobah represented a, ooh, challenge to me. But you, you're talking about it being dreamlike. I too, uh, I remember leaving Empire, I think it was on VHS for me, but leaving that viewing, that first viewing, and maybe the first couple of viewings, not sure myself i'm seven or eight i don't know what i saw there Mm -hmm. Uh, i think i thought probably at one point that vader was actually there or why was vader hiding in the cave why did yoda send him there why did yoda tell him Uh, it was all dreamlike truly dreamlike uh and the lessons start to emerge i think it's even was a taika waititi in the behind the scenes of mandalorian season one that roundtable discussion saying you know that sequence as a kid was yeah the, the slower training stuff and that just continued to speak to me as a got older. I think that's part of our discussion today too, but I I think it started there where I just did not quite know. I was afraid of the snakes and the lizards making the sounds, afraid of the cave, but wasn't sure what I watched. Yeah, no, I think, I think it was like a really scary place, but if somebody had opened a portal, you know, and said, do you want to go to see Dagobah? I'd be like, yes, Yoda's there. It was the Yoda of it. I think, you know, it's Mm. hard to separate Dagobah from Yoda. It was Yoda's home and I was all about Yoda. So I was kind of all about Dagobah. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I think I, I think I was intrigued by it. I think I was the mud was a little much for me. Yeah, so there you go. But yeah, uh, and I've always talked about you know Yoda, his theme. He's kind of comfort. He's kind of home in a way. But he's he's guidance. He's safety, security. He's the sound of uh, his song. His song is the sound of enlightenment. And, and Dagobah has that kind of vibe. Now I'm yeah. seven, eight. None of that's in my head. I'm not going, <laughs> Mom. Dagobah's kind of uh, got the feeling of enlightenment. <laughs> But it works. It especially works again. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm making the jokes of you and I sit down with our, our toys to watch this, but we're with Luke. Mm-hmm. We we want to go be a great warrior. Let's go do it. And you have to stop and go to this sloppy <laughs> mud hole and eat ugly uh, or, or eat disgusting soup, ugly, delicious soup. Like it was it was a challenge and, and it's grown with me. It's 
growing with me. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Right there with you. What did the uh, additional moments of Dagobah and the Clone Wars add to this planet story? Uh, I'll just start by saying this before I pitch it to you. Like, uh, Dagobah was not in the rearview mirror for me because obviously I'm still watching Empire, Revenge of the Sith. You know, you wanted the, you wanted to see the deleted scene of Yoda landing there, and eventually maybe you did. Dagobah was an important place. Uh, then I think Air of the Empire kind of introduces some things that are not canon uh, of, of the cave and what might have been there before. Uh, interesting things that got me thinking about it, but it wasn't until the Clone Wars, it wasn't until Yoda is sent there by Qui Gon that you get an additional powerful wrinkle in the Dagobah story. What is your reaction to that? Yeah, I think like when you when you grow up with it in the original trilogy, it's sort of like, well, there could be a million places like Dagobah, right? Mm -hmm. a, a place that's just like uh, full of life and a little quieter and has a a weird mystical sort of portal area like the Dark Tree Cave, right? Yeah. But then the way it, it, it's uh, centered in uh, not only some legend stories, but in particular Clone Wars is mm -hmm. it's a powerful ancient world like it's like you know it's if you're if you're ranking <laughs> force mm -hmm. planets you know <laughs> yes yeah. it's, it's up there with uh with octo and tython and you know moribund and the way it's presented in the clone wars series of it's not just an out of the way backwater for yoda to hide it's ancient powerful mm -hmm. how many centuries has it been a, a mecca for uh testing your soul in the dark tree that kind of gave it this extra oomph. I really love that. Actually, I really love that because uh, I think maybe growing up, I had a little bit of view of, of Dagobah of, well, of course Yoda would go there. No one's going there. Um, it's not on the Empire's radar screens, which, you know, there's a thematic lesson in that. The Empire's not looking on this level. I totally get that. But, but you know, the cave was a big mystery. And again, I'm mentioning, like, I, again, I think it was the Air of the Empire trilogy. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joseph, but just like uh, maybe a dark Jedi had been there and Yoda had fought him. And that's why there's dark side energy. Yeah. Which and the dark side energy masks Yoda's light side energy. I remember yes. being a big talking point. Yes, you're right. Um, so, and, that, and that's all. Uh, I don't have a thought either way, too negative or too positive on that. It, it was what it was. But yeah, the Clone Wars, it, to me, was it added relevance to it. Not that it needed it. Not that I was walking around going, I wish Dagobah had a little more importance in the st overall story. But it just, it, it made a lot more sense to me. I liked it. And those, those episodes are so weird mm -hmm. and wondrous. Uh, and it just kind of was perfect for it. And, and our Clone Wars report, um, our rewatch on that was pretty valuable to me. So yeah, it, it, it wonderfully added something to the Dagobah story for me. For yeah. Me. Yeah. And, and it, and it heightens, you know, this view that Dagobah, if, if seen in its true form is a powerful ancient world tied to the depth mm -hmm. of the force. Uh, but to other people, it's a slimy mud hole in R2 has been there at least twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he's on team slimy mud hole. Yes, and we, probably with reason, right? Yep. Probably with reason. Uh, side note, have you ever been upset that they let Yoda or let R2 stand out there in the rain? Like, come yes. on. One of, one of the uh, trading cards from the first series in the Empire Strikes yes. Back that I always remember is R2 peeking through, and it is what the text said, the title of the yeah. card, and it's R2 <laughs> yeah. watching everybody else have dinner and talk about who their fathers are. But no, he gets to be... <laughs> Out in the uh, rain. I said, all right, maybe he can't fit in there, but I don't know. There's was, was something about it. Um, Dagobah appears in a few stories from a certain point of view, as I mentioned. The, the, the couple, uh, the books, the ones that are out now, I'm sure we'll get a return of the Jedi one. At least I'm hopeful we'll get a return of the Jedi one, and I bet we'll return to Dagobah on that one. Uh, these books are uh, technically canon adjacent, question mark. Uh, take them uh, as you want, I guess. Uh, but I think there's really powerful stories in them. And one, Yoda fights Imperial probe droids, right? He's mm -hmm. he's fighting droids. And it's a great, it's the one where you kind of learn he's got a dry and wet house. He's got Qui-Gon's uh, <laughs> cape. Um, he's got a lot of uh, cool things going on there. Um, that one, and I love I loved that specific story, but I remember kind of, I don't want to say I had a problem with it, but I, I don't know. It changed. It's one of those things of like the whole Obi-Wan Kenobi series maybe challenged some people's ideas of what Kenobi was doing out there in the desert all that time, right? And some people didn't mm -hmm. love that he left. And I, and I get that. I get that. And I, I think one of the reasons I get it is this, where I, I didn't rub against it too much, but just the headcanon, uh, this idea of the Empire's like probe, and dro probe droid in any, everywhere, and they get so close with Yoda, and he's destroying them, or he's got to destroy uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What are you, your headcanon thoughts on the Empire? Are anyone else finding or arriving on Dagobah uh, yeah. who aren't Jedi on a search? 
Yeah, no, I that, well, that's a whole different thing of somebody else mm. ending up there, you know, yeah, who, who's yeah. not searching for Yoda. That's kind of a fascinating story. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I like that story so much. I like that he's got Qui Gon's robe as a blankie. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, there's <laughs> the uh, you know the story where he's thinking about Leia. But if I remember correctly, a part of it is like Yoda is want knows that he needs to be mindful at all times. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that he could be discovered right and i think he's yes. kind of kicking himself because he gets lost in thought and that's why the, he allows the probe droid to get it even as close as it does while he's uh, packing up to move to either dry or wet house i don't remember which yeah. um so the, the way i wrestle with it is either just the empire has a lot of probe droids and they're going to cover everywhere eventually and so hey mm-hmm. one showed up the yoda's been aware of it a long time i think the other the other headcanon thing is that Yoda is probably aware that, okay, Sidious is going to ransack uh, the Jedi Temple. Anakin has access to a lot of it. They're going to know everything. Mm. If they care to think of it, they know that Dagobah is got to be in the record somewhere as, you know, yeah. a planet teeming with the Force. This dark side cave is probably, you know, maybe mm. noted there. Maybe not. Mm. But I think... Yeah. Uh, I think he's got to be a little bit of like, oh, if they have access to, to Jedi history, are they ever going to go on a sweep of four sensitive planets in particular? Mm. Yeah, I got to be on the ready. Yep. Gotta, I got to have Qui-Gon's blankie to protect me. <laughs> uh, I love that. Yeah. And like I said, it wasn't like I was like, nah, this is what I envisioned. It just was a interesting um, wrinkle because I just think I just grew up the idea that, yeah, he was hiding out there and that's where he was and no one even came close but we know uh, it's a little different take on it there. Uh, big, big, big question here. We're talking about the wondrous side of Dagobah. Uh, but I do want to ask, what is what is the weirdest part of Dagobah to you? Is it the big presence of these force uh, sentient uh, creatures there? Is it, it just the swamp slugs? Where, what, what's the weirdest part? Going back to either childhood or now. It is obviously the yogurt plant. Uh, uh-huh. No, I mean, I th- I, the dragon snake really frightened me and weirded me yes. out as a kid of like, you you, yes. you know, like, ooh, uh, it, how could something that big be in this? You know, you don't know how deep the water is, you know, and yeah. you just see the back of it and just seeing the the mystery of it made it uh, more terrifying. Some classic Jaws stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that weirded me out as a kid. Uh, also that that uh, snakes love X-Wings. <laughs> <laughs> and, the one, and then the one that bites Mark Hamill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That mm. uh, that always weirded me out. And, and you know, the, the, the tree cave, right? Uh, especially, like, yeah. we've got a bunch of sort of lore and storytelling built up around now. But you go back to 1980 and, like, yeah, you just end up in a tree and it's kind of evil. And, and mm. Yoda's like, yeah, go under the tree. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, for me, I remember, you know, watching it being like, the second that Komodo dragon thing hisses at me, like, who, who cares about the psychological nightmare? I'm out then. That's that's yeah. scary enough. Turns out I couldn't face my fear. I'm gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. The, the real world terror of it and then the mystical go down there and face your fear. Probably the weirdest. Yeah, absolutely. Again, mind bending as, as, a, as, a, as a child and, indeed. And, and I'm with you on the, 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 the dragon snake. Like, I just didn't like, we're all just going to sit there and accept that. Like what's Yoda? How do you, I guess you got to learn to survive around it. It's part of the environment. Totally get it. It's just trying to do its thing. Uh, yeah, that was weird. And then I think even what it's one of the early behind the scenes things I learned of, uh, Oh, to get some shots, they either went to Lucas's or Spielberg's pool or what someone's pool and made it to bog and they shot there. Right. I, I can't mm-hmm. remember the details. Someone will tweet the exact details. Uh, and, and thank you for that. But like, I just remember that kind of blew my mind. Like, so that means that dragon snake was in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then I personally talk about not liking outdoor stuff. Uh, I'm, I grew up by the beach, but I, I don't like going into uncontrolled waters, <laughs> even on the shores. And I hate lakes. Now I'll go to a lake and stare into it for hours. Yeah. Oh, I'll pour a cup of coffee in the morning or a drink at night. I do not like walking into lakes. It's like squishy, sand, pointy, bitey. I no. I can't see the water. I don't like it. And that dragon snake is probably where that comes from. Well, you know, the dragon snake is accurate, you know, and come from Minnesota, land of uh, 10,000 lakes. There's actually over 11,000. And I think I've stepped foot into two of them, maybe three. Uh, and there are squiggly things in there <laughs> that you don't know what they are. At least I don't know what they are. Uh, uh, I love like- what you're saying about the behind the scenes, because uh, I remember learning is a is a young kid, I can't remember if I read it or was told it or was on a making of that Dagobah was built on a back lot. And I didn't mm. understand what a back lot was. And I just thought it was a parking lot. And I kept asking my parents in Portland, mm. is that the parking lot where Dagobah was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, yeah, I was, my mind was blown where Endor was just uh, a little north of San Francisco as, as a kid. <laughs> is what I thought. You know? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> like, what do you mean? What do you mean it's up there? Uh, great. Um, this is uh, this is a big question as well. We've touched upon it, but what is the magic of Dagobah? We always ask this question on Data Bank Dive, and how does it add to the magic and legend of Star Wars? We've touched on it a little bit here, but what do you think? Yeah, I think it, there's that big idea of it, it looks like one thing on the surface. It looks, you know, scary and unimportant. There's no civilization, but it is actually, you know, very important and very spiritual. I think don't don't judge things based on the surface. That's a huge part of the sort of the lesson of mm-hmm. Dagobah. But the magic of it, I think, is the dreamlike part of it, right? It that yeah. when Luke is like, hey, I don't know, it's like something out of a dream. I feel like we're being watched. That 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 mystical feeling, like that this is a place where you can connect with something larger than yourself, mm-hmm. something that is normally just out of your grasp, but is real. Uh, that to me is the real power of it. That it's it's cut off from the rest of the galaxy. It is a it's a place to slow down, get past the distractions, and and see things clearly again, and and see the things that are not clear elsewhere. Because this is a place that helps you slow down and see. You know, the, the magic is there's no Twitter on Tegba. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I love all that. I love the importance of it there, and the thematic reasons, and just uh, again, just. I, I always say this, maybe it's definitely more my point of view and my particular journey growing up as a kid in the 80s, but but not fully seeing all the stuff that the movies have to say about the hero's journey that Luke's on, this idea of becoming a great warrior and Luke having to kind of unlearn that and, and, and the Jedi uh, emerges after he throws his weapon down. Those are all big things. I saw them and too young to grab onto them. But Dagobah being uh, this place that is this uh, sort of left turn, this curveball, this this surprise on the journey that's not what Luke is thinking. And as a kid, I struggled to understand it. As the lessons uh, emerged uh, in my life, I connected back to this stuff more. Where now I'd say it's some of my favorite stuff in Star Wars. As a kid, it was the the boring swamp spot until he fights Vader uh, in the cave. Like, and and that's how it's maybe supposed to work. But that's Dagobah represents. Star Wars growing up, uh, or you grow up with Star Wars. Star Wars is ready for you when you're you're ready for the bigger parts, mm. connecting with it later. And it, and it, it is kind of this, uh, it's always there. Maybe Dagobah's kind of got this, it's always been there. You just have to go there <laughs> in your mind. You have to find it. You have to seek it. And and learning that lesson. All the things you're talking about, too, are there, the thematic lessons of it. But for me, just uh, going back and reevaluating my um understanding and interpretation of Luke's journey over the years and how this is this big key moment. And it was always there for me to see. I just had to, I just had to see it. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. Cause I think I had a little bit of an experience where it was never boring to me. It was mm. always fascinating. It was always some of my favorite scenes, which is partially cause I loved Yoda partially cause mm-hmm. I was a, I was a Luke guy, but I think yeah. there was a magic in like, there's something more here to be understood and I don't understand it yet. And I wanted to grasp mm. after it. And I was just like, can you go fight? <laughs> can you go fight? Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, love it. Love it. And that's, uh, that's the power of uh, Star Wars and the power of Dagobah. We're going to take a quick break here on Data Bank Dive. And we'll come back, a quick wrap up on the other side. And we're going to make this all personal. Stick around to more Data Bank Dive. Welcome back to Data Bank Dive. I'm Ken Napsok with Joseph Scrimshaw. We are looking at Dagobah, the planet, the setting, the meaning, the magic, the wondrous side of this murky swamp planet. But Joseph, we're going to make it personal here. And if you had to go into exile on Dagobah, you and I have both admitted maybe we're not the most outdoorsy <laughs> type. We appreciate it. We like going to it, but we like maybe a nice comfy bed to go home to. If you had to go in exile on Dagobah, what would be your survival strategy? How would you dare, or, and would you dare venture into the cave if you knew? Mm-hmm. Oh, two very important questions. I'm not proud of my survival strategy, but I'm going to attempt to be honest. Uh, I would try to crash my ship uh, securely at the top of a very tall tree. <laughs> So I could live inside my ship, I you know, mm-hmm. build some sort of rope ladder and I'd, I'd crawl down and I'd, I'd go into the muddy, scary places like full of dragons and snakes and mm-hmm. yogurt and, uh, and you know, get the supplies I needed and all that. But then I'd try to go back up to my little uh, treehouse ship where things are dry. And I try to have a, a pair of robes that are always dry no matter what. So I don't have to be all squelchy all the yeah. time. Mm. I lo- okay, so I love this, and, and we'll get to the cave thing here in a second. The reason I love this is, 
if I, uh, I don't know how, if, if Yoda, you know, rented his, uh, his house and moved in or he had to build it slowly over time. I can't remember the details of it. Maybe, maybe we don't know. Uh, but let's just say I have to kind of carve out that little hut mm-hmm. myself and I do it. I, I could probably, all right, I figure that out. I'll do it. Then, then you're telling me I have to switch because of the seasons. I would just, I give up. I'm going to try to make this work here. And I'd probably drown in the mud or whatever happens. I don't know. The fact that I'd have to, you know, go establish another house after I did it. I, I'd be upset. This is, I'm someone who I unfurl a hose in my backyard. I leave it unfurled because I hate having to curl it back up. I just Ugh. furl it, furl it back. I can't stand it. You know, I even have the ones that are supposed to do it by himself. We're talking hoses here on Dagobah. So I'd get, I'd get, I would get really upset so you're you're crashing your ship into the trees now who knows what's up in the trees yeah you got bog wings and whatnot we might have uh you know angry beaks up there or something like that yeah. space beaks <laughs> but i i like this i, I like this idea yeah That's the great. tree the tree devils are up there right great yeah. great yeah yeah but as far as the cave i um i would struggle i i would be this is again going to luke stuff like i would absolutely be luke going no weapons Screw you. I'm, 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 I'm going in here. Uh, it, it would be a challenge for me. If you know, if you got a little, if you got Yoda telling you there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, Yoda's a little cryptic, only what you take with you. You know, we saw in Clone Wars that he had his, he, he took his fears in with him. Right. And, yes. Yeah. And he saw everything that's going to spiral out of, of his, his fear based uh, leading of the Jedi order. Um, yeah. I think, uh, this is strange. Sometimes physical things uh, frighten me more than emotional things. Like I'd be far more frightened of the dragon snake <laughs> than having yeah. a, a super scary, uh, honestly, counseling session with the, with the dark tree cave. Which yeah. is like, there's a part of me that I think I, I, maybe the experience would be more rattling and horrifying than than I would expect. But I think there's a part of me that'd be like, I think I know the things that I'm most afraid of. I think I know my greatest flaws in the way I'm going to harm myself if I'm not careful. Mm-hmm. Let, let's double check with the tree. <laughs> I See love if that. I'm right. No, I love that too. And, uh, and my, you know, me saying I, I'd, I'd uh, you know, cinch up my belt and take my weapons in. That's even if I go. There's also the way, it, and it's, it's telling, it's not it's not the best way because what you're talking about is a great way to approach life. There's a challenge in there for you and can you learn the truth about yourself? I just did this on one of my Patreon-only podcasts where I had to get some x-rays the other day from my back and that's all I was going into. And I was, a, I was, I was really tense because I realized they, they're going to see everything. And I might learn some truths I don't want to learn. Not even about my back. Who knows else what they'll find, you know, like, right. uh, and it, it's a real, it's a, it's a thing. It's beyond just, uh, I don't like going to the doctor. It's like, oh, they're I can't hide what's in here can no longer be hidden from me. And I think if Yoda's like, Hey, you go in there, put your weapons down. You're going to learn something. And what you go in there with is, is what you bring. And that's could be the danger. I'd be like, you know what? I'm good. I don't need to know anything. I'm going to go back to my crashed ship hut <laughs> and then I wouldn't learn anything new. And that's part of the lesson too, going back to the magic of it. Yeah. There's some great storytelling about the, 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 the tree wanting you to bring it, it's fear and kind of mm. feed it. Uh, yeah. And that would be a fun challenge too of like, can I, can I, you know, not feed the tree today? <laughs> Which is a great belly song. Feed the tree. <laughs> uh, love that. Uh, final question here. Our final uh, question in this section uh, you kind of mentioned it, but, but did you ever own, end up owning the Kenner Dagobah playset? And then what is your dream Dagobah merch idea? Yeah, no, eighth birthday. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think my dad must have had a big uh, payday because I didn't normally get a, a lot of the, the playsets or vehicles. Uh, but my eighth birthday, I got the Kenner Dagobah playset and the battle damaged X-Wing. So I was like, I, oh, I, it was heaven. I can do it all now. Wow. <laughs> like, and that's, this is a, that's the kind of kid I, I was of like, uh, my brother had the Falcon and I thought that was cool. And like, but, but mm. I want to be crashed on Dagobah learning lessons. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I love that playset. set. Uh, you know, I stared yeah. at it and studied it. The various little creatures uh, that, that are the wildlife, mm. the frogs that are sculpted into the base yes. of it is great. I did know. And I had, I had a friend that owned it. Uh, and I love that detail there. Um, and I, you know, I want, do you, do you, is it in your storage now? What happened to it? Yeah, no, I, I had taken great care of it. I had it displayed in one of my homes, and I think moths got to it, and they they ate the bog entirely. <laughs> oh, so no. the swamp is gone because you used to be able to, you know, stick the, yeah. the people in there. But I think I still have all the boxes you can make levitate. Yeah, and yeah, okay. no, I I checked on it recently. It is a it's living in my storage unit just a few blocks away. 
I would, because uh, everything is such a magical toy. And then if you probably see it now, you're like, oh, this is all it was? Like, sometimes it happens. But I like, I'm glad to hear that uh, some of the magic of Dagobah returns. Uh, there, Yeah, I did have it, like I said, uh, as far as other merch ideas for, for me, for my for my money, um, we'll close with yours. I, I would like uh, the the root uh, the root stew, mm. like some kind of version of it. It kind of I like I like I like miso soup, right? Uh, miso soup, I th- imagine tastes better, but just kind of uh, there's got to be a crafting book or a great article from someone on StarWars.com about how to make it. But oh, I just yeah. would like that mass marketed. Oh yeah, I would love to just be able to run to my local store and just uh, pick up a bunch of root leaf stew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like you know what I mean? Like, you got the BB-8 oranges, all the things we can make fun of over the years. I would love to Campbell soup aisle, and then there's the Yoda root leaf stew, just Yoda's <laughs> face on it. Like, instead of Chef Boyardee, it's Yoda. <laughs> oh, that would be absolutely great. Uh, so I want that, and then I want uh, to, that Dagobah place that from when we were kids is great, because it's, it's the joke of, you know, like, everything important that happens on the planet happens in one space of like, it's all just yeah. jammed together. It's Yoda's house. It's also the dream cave, you know, it's, it's yeah. everything. Uh, I would like a tree cave play set where you could right. kind of like open it up and you could just like, Hey, you can bring any action figure down here to face their worst fears. <laughs> that's great. That's, a, that's wonderful. Uh, I don't, I, I know they did a Lego set recently. I don't know if I got I got the Octo one, which is great. So maybe I'll do that. I'll pick up that Lego one. Great stuff. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and you know what? Maybe one day I'll get the actual original Kenner Dagobah playset and make up for, uh, you know, lost magic in my childhood. <laughs> uh, we are uh, wrapping up this show. As always, we, we're going to rate the wild, weird, and wondrous, uh, the, that factor of Dagobah. Our rating system is based on where the original Star Wars weirdos, wondrous in its own way, Lobot. So, Joseph, out of 10 Lobot heads, one being the least, 10 being the most, how many Lobot heads do you give Dagobah? I'm going to give it a full eight Lobot heads. Mm. Uh, I think it is a little bit, you know, weird because it is this space fantasy thing of like, oh, it's a swamp with a dragon snake and a yogurt plant. Uh, But it's also so wondrous, especially the way it's introduced in Empire Strikes Back of being dreamlike that Mm. it it is truly wondrous for me. You can always wonder more about Dagobah. So that brings it up to an eight Lobot head for me. Uh, you know what? I, I so I'm I'm going eight out of ten too. But to explain how uh, I get to the same spot as you, I go full ten for wondrous. It's everything in Star Wars. It's such a wonderful magical place. You add in William's score for Yoda, and you you're just you just got this wonderful wonderful thing. But it does lose a point or two for me when it comes to wild or weird because there's a lot of weird things going on. But I just remember thinking that iguana is at the pet store down the street for me, <laughs> which is OK. I wouldn't want it any other way in Star Wars. But like, ah, OK, I can I can go. I can make my own Dagobah. I can go to jo- my friend Joseph's uh, backyard that he's muddying up and I can, get, I can get an iguana at the pet store. And we can redo uh, Dagobah. So for there, I go eight out of ten. Nice. Nice. I got one quick Dagobah question for you. We're yeah. wrapping up here, so it'll be a, a very quick. So yeah. Luke lands just fine in Return of the Jedi. Do you think that is that a sign of Luke becoming a Jedi that he's in sync? Like he reaches out with the force and, and Dagobah yeah. tells him like, here's your parking space, dude. Here's some solid land. Mm-hmm. I think so. But also I think Yoda's too sick, tired and dying to uh, mess up his ship. <laughs> I think I've always been to school. And again, I think there may be some legends answers again. Someone can, can let us know. But I think Yoda kind of, Gone done, messed up his X Wing and crashed his ship. <laughs> and <laughs> that's part of it there. Um, uh, to me, that's total headcanon on my side. So I, but I think, I think you're right. I think that's, uh, and I would love to see that deleted scene of, I've got it, R2. I know where to park this time. And R2's yeah. like, this is my third time here. <laughs> I know where to land. Yeah. And I think Luke's being all Jedi, like, no, you don't use sensors at all. It's all about feelings. And R2's <laughs> just like swearing and beeping. You, you Jedi. I oh, love it. Well, that's a lot of uh, a lot of fun talking about Dagobah. We hope you out there enjoyed that conversation. Let us know what your rank it is on Dagobah or how wondrous it is and what it means to you or post pictures of any home Dagobah place that you made with a hose in your backyard. I'm fascinated <laughs> with that. I absolutely love that. Uh, here's where you can find us. We're the Force Center Podcast. Go to Twitter, Force Center Pod. From there, you can link to all the things we do, YouTube channels, Instagram, all those kind of wonderful things were there. For me, you can go to uh, at Ken Napsock across all social media platforms or, or go to my uh, website, KenNapsock.com for information on upcoming comedy shows. I'm going to be part of the Mark Ellis comedy taping on December 3rd. So come out to LA for that and more things on the way. Joseph, where can they find you? 
You can find me on all the social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Mastodon, by searching for Joseph Scrimshaw. And if you want to check out uh, more of my work, you can go to YouTube and search for Joseph Scrimshaw and watch some stuff on my channel. There you go. All right, that's it for Yoda, Bog Wings, and Yogurt Plants. We'll see you next time here on Force Center.